Hello friends and welcome back. I am Juice and we are in my bedroom. Today I would love to talk about what I have learned from my years of not meeting new people and not dating about paradoxically love and relationships. I knew that I did not have the capacity to engage in any new social relations to connect to people but looking back I didn't intend for it to be whole years of self-reflection and healing which I can now look back on and say those were definitely years where I was celibate but that was not the intention and I say that because I have learned such valuable perspectives and lessons during this time and I think it's really interesting so I wanted to share a bit about that and also kind of tell the story. What I can say is that at the beginning of the journey I just knew that I needed a lot of time for myself and I can say that these years have been the beginning of me building a healthy foundation of self-love and self-esteem and also confidence. And before we get started, I also wanted to mention that my message with this video is not necessarily to recommend celibacy or abstinence, especially because for me, it didn't have any, I didn't have any religious reasons to do this. But my message is that whether you identify with being single or partnered or anything in between, we will always have this relationship with ourselves and that it is so okay and also so wonderful to invest this time and love into ourselves. That is why I'm excited to talk about these things because I feel like these lessons on love and relationships can truly apply to anyone on any at any point in their journey. This video is also made in partnership with Cheeks and I'll talk more about them very soon. So let's get started with <laughs> maybe like chapter one of my story of being unintentionally celibate in what I've learned. I just took care of that cable over there. Lesson one for me, we're starting off with a banger, was that I had to stop idealizing love for me to allow it to flow, flow towards myself and also flow outward i hope that makes sense i can say that i've always been a hopeless romantic so if you identify with that as well this goes out to you learning this lesson marked the beginning of me loving myself there's a lot to talk about but focusing on just the realization that they are not coming to save me as long as i'm waiting like the the one <laughs> The one person that I idealize as someone who's going to make my life better, make my life easier, make me feel loved. Yeah, as long as I am out here desperately craving <laughs> that person, I am not attracting a healthy relationship or dynamic. And I realized most importantly that I did not understand what unconditional love is it was definitely this battle of me trying to love myself but also having like really harsh conditions of having to be perfect until i can love myself so as many times as i asked myself like how can i love myself now how can i love myself unconditionally not when but now how now i still like today in the present moment find myself pushing my happiness or my love away or like connecting a condition to it it's really <laughs> been a long process of deconstructing these beliefs but if i can give you something to take along for your journey it's the question how can i love myself now lesson number two is about my journey of self-exploration and also intimacy how taking this into my own hands once again has changed me like forever 
it was when I started treating myself better that I also came to this conclusion like if I am interested in exploring and trying out things I do not have to wait for other people to come into my life to get started with this and follow my curiosities what I learned is that I can be in charge of my sexuality and my intimacy and I also gained this knowledge that I will always want to have a strong sense of knowing myself and having a good relationship with my sexuality everyone's journey of course is so individual nurturing this relationship as well as learning about it continuously throughout life i see it as whether i share my intimacy with others or not learning and being open about it and talking about it can only support um those moments and impact me positively as i mentioned cheeks at the beginning of this video it is an amazing resource to discover ethical erotic content as well as exciting sexual education if you haven't heard about cheeks before they are a sexual wellness platform offering educational as well as erotic content in the form of videos audios and also workshops I recommend Cheeks because one of their goals is to create a safe space for everyone who wants to learn more about themselves as well as their sexual needs. I also appreciate that they prioritize a diverse representation in their content and also that they recognize their responsibility in dealing with pornography so all of their content is produced fairly and ethically having a safe space such as cheeks online to explore for me has not only been educational and fun but also boosts my confidence and strengthens my connection with myself so if this intrigues you you can try cheeks for free for seven days if you choose the annual subscription option and use the code right here Yusu7. They're also linked in the description box. Thank you to Cheeks. And let's move on to lesson three. On the theme of empowering education, learning about love, which I really grew up as seeing, especially being a hopeless romantic, seeing as something really intangible and almost as this magical phenomena. <laughs> So learning about it made me less scared of it and also fueled of course my journey of loving myself to begin with so in this section of the video i want to share the bits of knowledge that i have taken from my time of exploring love and relationships on a theoretical basis of reading non-fiction literature about love and relationships and about dating I want to acknowledge that theory is definitely a very small part when it comes to practicing relationships and human connection, but nonetheless a very a very valuable resource, especially if you're at a point where relating and putting yourself out there in the world or opening yourself up to the world isn't your priority. When it's more about healing and working on yourself, for me personally, it was a great support and help me feel more confident um, i'm grouping these little bits of knowledge into three subgroups so the first one is healthy dating approaches one theme i recognized throughout these books was that we actually do have choices to make when it comes to love that we can take a step back and be intentional who we spend our time with who we engage with and thinking that you only have one chance at love it really correlates with feeling desperately romantic in life i really thought like okay this is so much pressure this is so stressful because there's probably just one person out there um so yeah the theme i recognized was that you can have an abundance mindset about dating and love that there are plenty of amazing people out there 
who would love to get to know you and who you are compatible with. And then another piece of dating advice that I found extremely valuable was sort of changing what I look for when I'm dating and to have a more open approach to everything, like especially on dating apps, which is such a bizarre concept, like still to me, it is so easy to just focus on looking for something, like looking for something specific um, or thinking about whether a photo <laughs> of someone matches your vibe, right? So when we reframe this approach and are like, you know what, let me be open to having starting conversations with different kinds of people, even if initially we didn't feel like, oh, this is love at first sight, or oh, I'm attracted to this person, or oh, I have a crush on this person. Coming from more of a curious and interested standpoint, I found that that worked really well for me. I've kind of come to the conclusion anyways through experience that you need to talk to someone anyways to get to know them. So maybe just start talking to people without thinking too much about whether this could be a good match. Does that make sense? There's definitely opportunities to miss awesome people when your perspective is kind of closed on and closed in on one thing. So maybe focus less on the first impression and try to get to know someone on a communication basis, on a conversational basis. See if your style of communication matches, if your energy matches in terms of how you express yourself and how you talk about certain things. I would say that's a good indication to see whether you can build a good connection with someone. The next grouping is called healthy attachments and safe relations. This is in regards to me learning about my attachment style and learning about attachment theory in general. Also, I've read this one book called Polysecure, which talks about... Actually, I learned a lot of just general good dating mindsets in that book, but it was written to explore how attachment theory can work together with non-monogamy because especially non-monogamy, relationship security is reframed, right? The relationship security isn't based on exclusivity anymore as it is in monogamy traditionally. It can definitely be unfamiliar and new to find the security within the relationships and really focus on the unique connection, on the communication to hone that security. So I found it an extre extremely interesting topic, especially as someone with an insecure attachment style with the intention to become more secure with really this desire of being a secure person and attaching securely or more securely, right? Um, with the theory and also with practice and with amazing people in my life who allow me to <laughs> become more secure, I've definitely experienced a lot of transformation and feel so much less anxious when it comes to all of all kinds of relationships. So yeah, it's definitely been a beautiful healing journey, which I'm still on today. Lastly, for literature, we're talking about relationship growth. There are three things that I have found extremely helpful to keep in mind when it comes actually to any kind of relationship. And one of those is how powerful resentment is and how resentment truly compounds. And that goes together with the second point, And that is that one of our main responsibilities in our relationships is to tell our truth. As someone who grew up being insecure and trying to please people, my truth didn't really matter <laughs> for most of my life. So that's been something that I've been learning to be honest and recognize my responsibility to express my truth. So for me, being aware of 
the importance of not letting resentment build up as well as voicing my truth over and over again in little moments to prevent resentment from building up, you know, has already improved the way I communicate so much. Just recognizing that these are the important things to talk about and to bring up. Knowing more about this world of love with the lessons I've talked about, you know, as I said, it's been years probably like three or four years of me focusing so much on myself and learning I felt eager but just as scared <laughs> to put myself out there I don't know if anyone else relates to this but the idea of dating was so cringe to me but I think beyond that it was the fear of rejection that held me back and that would be my lesson <laughs> to not let this fear hold me back and i'm happy to say that i have overcome it <laughs> and in the last couple of months i've started dating again and truly as much as i guess putting yourself out there always comes with connections that may not work out I was able to prove my fears wrong and discover that there are so many people who I would love to get to know and who would love to get to know me. So that has been fun and my dating life has been very cute so far. I definitely want to talk more about my journey of self-love because it has been the most life-changing thing that I have learned or the most life-changing skill or value or thing that i've nurtured like self-love i went from not understanding it to feeling it now and nurturing it and creating more of it so if you have questions concerning self-love maybe i can implement them in a future video i hope you enjoyed this video that it was interesting to listen to make sure to check out cheeks if you're interested they're linked below Thank you so much for being here. I will see you around and bisous.